Bruce the Accounting Guy again here today, and today we're going to be going through journal entry creation. We're going to learn how to create journal entries just like real accountants do. Now everything that we've learned up until this time has been to prepare you for your journal entry creation. Now it sounds kind of scary, I know, almost like a sci-fi movie, but it's really not that scary at all. And we'll see that by the end of class. But when it comes time for journal entry creation, we need to be very, very familiar with the general accounting equation. Now, what I'm going to show you today, I want you to remember the format, and I want you to do it exactly like I say. And when you do your homework and you get online and you check your homework out with what's online, yours should look exactly the same. If it doesn't, then unfortunately, you're doing it wrong, and you're wrong, the two favorite words that my wife has in her vocabulary. So I get to say it for a change to someone else. So make sure that when you are doing this stuff, that you are very you know, clear on it, that you should have exactly the same answers as what's in the, um, in the answer key. If not, then you don't have it right. You should have the same titles. You should have the same dollar amounts. It should be set up exactly the same. So let's go to the general accounting equation here and get a better understanding of it. Uh, last chapter was the last time that you'll really record anything in that linear form under this equation. But what you need to do is understand two things, and that is, is that we are now going to learn debits, and we are going to learn a credit. When it comes to a debit, they're always on the left, and a credit is always on the right. And if you can remember that, you have around 50% of the battle out of the way. Debits on the left, and credits on the right. Now, the reason that I say that's important is because we have assets on the left side of our equation and liabilities on our <coughs> and owner's equity on our right. And therefore, to make an asset go up, we will always debit it. And to make any liability increase in amount, we will credit it. And to make owner's equity go up, we will credit it. And the opposite side would be that, if, therefore, if we want to make an asset go down, we know we can't debit it. We have to credit it. And if we have a liability, we would therefore debit it. And owner's equity down would be a debit. Now, there's two things that make owner's equity go up. I want to concentrate on that for a little bit more. And that is capital, that's when the owner puts money in, and revenue, when the, when the company is making money. So whenever we record the owner putting money in, we'll make a credit because it makes owner's equity go up. Whenever we're recording revenue, it makes uh, owner's equity go up. So we'll do a credit. And these two items, the drawing, that's the owner taking money out, and expenses, of course, the money you know, that's being spent to keep the company in oper operating, they make owner's equity go down, so we couldn't credit them, we debit them. If we keep that in mind when we do our journal entry creation, we should be much more successful. So let's take a look at a general journal. Now, the general journal is called the Book of Original Entry because of the fact that it is the first place anything is entered, any of our transactions are, are entered. So that would be a good test question, wouldn't it? What's, what's, what, what's the general journal called? The book of original entry. Okay, now, when we do a general journal, there's a specific format you should use, and I want you to get used to that format because that's what you'll need when you're doing the, exa doing the exam and doing entries for the rest of the semester. First of all, for every transaction, we'll always have a date, and we put that in the date column. Notice that we have a specific margin here, and we do have to pay attention to that margin. In this first transaction, we'll describe it. Let's describe it back to this equation. Remember that we have an owner. He puts His name is Bird, C.R. Bird, and he's going to put in $10,000 into the company. By putting in $10,000, we know that's cash, and cash is an asset. And to make an asset go up, we debit. So that's why we will debit cash, which I will explain and you know, show it in a second. When the owner's putting money in, it's owner's equity. And the owner's equity, of course, is going up also, and that's capital. And to make a, 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 a owner's equity go up, we credit because it's on the right side of the equation. So therefore, that's where the, the debit and the credit came from. But let's take a, a closer look at the entry. Whenever we do a journal entry, we must use the exact titles that we're supposed to be using, which is cash. Cash was our debit, and the account we're going to debit always goes first. That's the first account we would always list. And we would specifically take that debit and put it next 
to the margin and we'd come out and put the $10,000. We'll talk about this REF in a few mo moments. Then we do our credit. And the account we credit, we always must indent. So I want you to remember that you always put the accounts you're debiting right next to the margin. That is a must or you'll lose points. And also it is a proper accounting procedure. And then you indent and you will put the account you're going to credit. And notice that they've done that. It's also a lot easier to see what account's being debited and what's being credited. And then they came out here and put the $10,000 credit. The other thing that you must do after you do your, your entry is, is you must use, you don't have to use the parentheses, but the next very line, you put an explanation. doesn't have to be large. Notice they put owner's investment of cash in business, but you should have it there. The biggest reason that you put an explanation is you might be an accounting clerk in, in a company and you do this work and you have a supervisor and a couple of weeks later your supervisor is looking at your work. By looking at it and seeing your explanations, your supervisor doesn't have to come back and ask you what happened, why you made that entry. Additionally, what if your supervisor didn't understand the entry because you didn't have an explanation? It would be even worse if your supervisor came back to you, asked you that question, and you couldn't even answer the explanation. Tell them the explanation because you forgot because there's just so many. So it's always wise to put an explanation. Some people put kind of move indent them out. Some people put them in brackets. I don't care if you don't put them in brackets. The important thing is, is that you always put them on the very next line. Once you've done that, we're almost done with the entry. We'll come back to these references. But you always skip a line. I want you to skip a line between entries. Notice how they've skipped a line between journal entries. Do not put one right on top of the other. That is not proper and you will lose points for format if you do not skip them. So again, always show the date. Put your debit first next to the margin. Indent for the account you're going to credit. Put your two dollar amounts out here and put an explanation and skip a line before you go on. Additionally, notice that the debit column will always equal the credit column. Now when it comes to the reference column, if, when you did your reading in the chapter, you saw that these amounts are then taken and posted to the general ledger accounts. After these amounts are posted to the general ledger accounts, you would come back and you would take the general ledger account number and put them in here. Then that tells me that these have been posted. For most of the work you're going to do for me, all I'm going to want are journal entries without the reference column numbers. So that was our first entry. In our second entry, we go out and we buy office equipment for $5,000, but we buy it on a note. We sign a legal document for a note payable. Again, did we use cash in that? No. But what did we affect? Well, we bought office equipment, so you know that that will be your first title you will use. Office equipment, of course, is an asset. Office equipment is increasing. Assets are on the left. To increase an asset, we debit. Hence, we list office equipment out first, and we come over and put the $5,000 debit. Now, once we know we have a debit, we automatically, again, should know that debits and credits should be equal, so the other side of the entry has to be a credit. So that can help you along when you do attack this. If you know one item for sure, then you know the other side. Now, I didn't say we use cash. I said we signed a note payable, so we would have to use a note payable. Now, think about a note payable. Again, it is a liability. It's money you owe others. It's, so therefore, to increase liabilities, we credit them, and therefore, we indent, put note payable, the $5,000. The last part of the entry, they put an explanation. Now, notice they put this explanation on two lines because they didn't want the word equipment going into these columns, and if you have to do that, that's fine. But once they list the entry out, they skip a space to get to the next one. On the next one, we have a little bit different of an item. We have an item now that's new to us in the fact that we have collected $1,200 for services we're going to do for a company in the future. So they're really pre-paying us. They're paying us ahead of time. Well, we could, that is going to be future revenue to us, but we don't want to call it revenue now because we haven't earned it. And if we don't do the work, what would we have to do with that $1,200? We'd have to give it back. So at this point, any money we get ahead of time for goods or services that we're going to provide in the future, we can call it revenue, but we're going to put a special word in front of it. We're going to put the word unearned. And that word unearned keeps it off of the income statement. 
Generally, all revenue goes on income statements, but when we have the word unearned, it says we must do the work or give the money back. And I'll talk about that more in a second. So, again, we, we know we got cash in. We would debit cash. Cash is an asset. We want to increase our assets. Assets are on the left. To increase them, we debit them. And therefore, it is a debit to cash of 1,200. Cash is next to the margin. Of course, that was the date. And then we put the 1,200. Now we've got to put our, li our, our credit. We have to indent. And notice it's going to be unearned revenue. Now, unearned revenue really is another way of saying payable. And a payable, of course, is a liability. And the increased liabilities, they're on the right. We have to credit them. So we'd have our unearned revenue of $1,200. And we would treat this unearned revenue account just like an accounts payable, just like a notes payable. It would be listed under liabilities. And until we earn it, we have to keep it in unearned revenue. Notice the explanation. They skipped a sentence and we're on to the next one. The next one is rent that we're paying. We paid $900 rent for the month. Now again, if you get confused on what do I do with rent expense, we did pay out cash. And cash is the easiest item usually most students have to work with. And now what are we doing to cash? We're decreasing it. Well, we know that cash is an asset. To decrease cash, it's on, I mean, to increase cash, we debit it to make it go up. But now we want to make it go down, so we would do the opposite, which is credit it. But that, so therefore, if we know we're crediting cash, we know the other side of the entry has to be a debit. And it was rent, but it was, we always have to classify, what is it? Rent expense. And expenses were items that affected owner's equity, but it was one that made owner's equity do what? It actually, expenses actually make owner's equity go down. And since an owner's equity item makes expenses go down, we know to credit owner's equity to make it go up, but drawing and expenses make it go down, so we'd have to debited. So expenses will always be debited. You'll get the hang of it after a while. Whenever you see an expense, you go, oh, I'm going to debit it. But again, remember, these two items, capital and revenue, make owner's equity go up. Those are the only ones we would credit. Drawing and expenses make owner's equity go down, so we would debit it. So therefore, coming back to our entry, we have the date. Our rent expense is the debit, so it goes directly next to the margin. We come out here and put the $900 then we come back and indent to put the credit, which is cash, of 900 We put our explanation. We're done. We skip a line, and we go to the next entry. The last entry has one other item that we have to deal with that's fairly new. It's the opposite of that unearned revenue account. It's called prepaid insurance. We have an insurance policy for one year. It's, um, it, it's effective uh, the 1st of October. And we haven't really used it yet. So what we do is, is instead of, again, when you say, well, you paid insurance, that's insurance expense. But it's good for a whole year. And so what we've really done is prepaid our insurance. And it's considered an asset. And you're just going to have to put that into your accounting repertoire, the word prepaid and insurance. And prepaid insurance is an asset. We'll cover more of the prepaid insurance and how it actually works in Chapter 3. Um, but right now, um, just remember that when we pay for something ahead of time, it's a prepaid. It's an asset that we get to use later. So if it's an asset, and I just increased it by 600 assets to increase them, they're on the left. We debit them. So that's why prepaid insurance goes next to the margin. And of course, since we paid it, that's a use of cash. Cash is an asset, but it didn't go up. It went down. To make them go up, it's a debit. So therefore, to make it go down is a credit. We indent. We put the word cash in $600 and then put our explanation, all right? That is general, journey, general journal creation. Again, when you're doing your general journals, please make sure that you do them exactly the way they're shown in the textbook, exactly the way I've shown them here to you today, exactly the way they are in your answer keys that you get online. It is important for you to get the format down perfectly. And when I say perfectly, I mean that the debits are first and right next to the margin that account. And that the count you're going to credit is second and indented. And then the very next line is a explanation. And then you skip a line before you go neck down to the next what? Journal entry. All journal entries are double entry, which means you're always having the same amount of debits 
as you are the same amount of credits. We are now done, couple things, we are now done with linear equations. We're not doing them anymore, we're doing the regular journal entries. And we now no longer use the word investment in any of our entries. When the owner puts money in, like they did in the very first entry that we did, CR Capital, CR Bird Capital, that is what you are to title the account because that is the name of the general ledger account. CR Bird Capital. Always put the name of the person and the word capital after it. That's all I have for you today, and I'll see you again real soon.